Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Only five more hours to live. <laughs> George Gibbs, where are you going? Just stepping across the grass to see my girl. Now, George, it is raining torrents. You put your overshoes on. You don't leave this house without being prepared for it. Oh, Mama, she just step. Now, George, you'll catch death of a cold, and you'll cough all through the service. <clears throat> George, do as your mother tells you. Now, from tomorrow on, you can kill yourself in all weathers, but <laughs> while you live in my house, you live wisely, thank you. Now, maybe Myrtle Webb isn't used to callers at seven in the morning. Here, take a cup of coffee first. Be right back. <laughs> Good morning, Mother Webb. Goodness, you frightened me. Now, George, you can come in a minute out of the way. You know I can't ask you when. Why not? George, you know as well as I do, a groom is not allowed to see his bride on his wedding day. Not until he sees her in church. That's just superstition. Good morning, Mr. Webb. Good morning, George. <laughs> oh, Mr. Webb, you don't believe in that superstition, do you? <clears throat> Well, George, there's some common sense in some of those superstitions, you know. Millions have followed it, George, and you don't want to be the first to fly in the face of a custom. How's Emily? She hasn't waken up yet. I haven't heard a word out of her. Emily's asleep? Yes, and no wonder. We were up till all hours sewing and packing. Now, George, I'll tell you what I'll do. You sit down here with Mr. Webb and drink this cup of coffee. And I'll go upstairs and make sure that Emily doesn't come down and surprise you. There's some bacon, too, but don't be long about it. <laughs> well, how are you, George? <laughs> I'm fine. <clears throat> Mr. Webb, what sense is there in superstition like that? I don't know. On her wedding day, a girl's head is apt to be full of clothes in one thing or another. Don't you think that's probably it? Yes. Uh, I never thought of that. The girl's after you might nervous on her wedding day. <laughs> I wish a man could get married without all that marching up and down. George, every man that has ever lived just thought that. <laughs> it hasn't been any use. No, for a while now, the woman had it all their own. The man looks mighty small at a wedding, George. All those good women standing up there shoulder to shoulder, making sure the knot's tied in a mighty public way. But you believe in it. Don't you, Mr. Webb? Yes. yes. Now, don't you misunderstand me, George. Marriage is a wonderful thing. Wonderful. And don't you forget that. No, sir. Mr. Webb, how old were you when you got married? When I got married? Well, I had been away to college, and I'd taken some time to settle down. No, but Mrs. Webb, Mrs. Webb wasn't much older than Emily is, but I guess age doesn't have much to do with it compared with other things. <laughs> what were you going to say, Mr. Webb? I don't know, was I going to say something? But George, I was thinking of the advice that my father gave me on the day I got married. Charles, he said, Charles, stay right off showing who's boss. Best thing to do is to give an order, even if it doesn't make any sense, so she'll learn to obey. But if anything about your wife bothers you, anything, her conversation, or anything like that, just get right up and leave the house. That'll make it clear to her, that will make it right clear. But when Charles, he said to me, Charles, never, ever, ever let your wife know how much money you have. Never. Mr. Webb, I did it possibly, so I took the opposite of his advice. And I've been happy ever since. <laughs> Let that be a lesson to you, George. Never ask advice on a personal matter. <laughs> Are you going to raise chickens on your farm? What? Are you going to raise chickens on your farm, George? Oh, well, Uncle Luke's never been much interested, but I You see, this that... book came into my office the other day on the Philo system of raising chickens, and I want you to read it. I'm thinking of starting in a small way in the backyard, and I'm putting an incubator in the cellar. Charles, are you talking about that old incubator again? I thought you two would be talking about something worthwhile. Well, Myrtle, if you want to give the boys some good advice, I'll just go upstairs and leave you alone with him. George, <laughs> Emily has to come downstairs and eat her breakfast. She sends you her love, but she doesn't want to lay eyes on you. <laughs> Goodbye. Myrtle, I guess you've never heard of that older superstition. What do you mean, Charles? Since the caveman, no bridegroom should see his father-in-law on the day of the wedding. <laughs> <laughs> the 